Hello. Today I'm going to teach you how to rip your Blu-rays as well as convert them to a format that is playable over DLNA. For example, I have a Samsung 46-inch TV, something like that. And it uses the Samsung technology is called All Share, I believe, or Media Play. And uh, for those of you with Samsung TVs, you can look up the specs for it. I found that my TV, although it can play DTS audio over the DLNA streaming, it can't convert it fast enough, so it creates uh, stuttering in the playback. So my solution, what I found, is to just convert the DTS audio to AC3 5.1 audio, which sounds almost just as good, unless you have Unless you're a serious auto audiophile, you will not be able to tell the difference. And these are the programs that you'll need: DVD Fab, or any H or any CD, any DVD. Another program does exactly the same thing. Those two you will have to pay for. Um, that's the only program in this tutorial that you do have to pay for, and you're paying for the ability to decrypt the DRM from the different studios there's lots of different kinds I don't really know all the details all I know is I use DVD fab and it can decode any D any CD any DVD and any blu-ray that I've thrown at it so let's go ahead and jump into DVD fab today we'll be using the ghost in the shell uh, blu-ray release or ghost in the shell 2.0 I should say I'm um, using this because it's my favorite movie and it's not distributed by a major distributor so hopefully we won't get any copyright problems on YouTube I'm just gonna say North America yeah so the DVD fab is taking away any DRM from the disc right now great you'll see there's two tracks um, this one she just has two audio tracks so DVD fab is really good at finding basically what you want and sometimes there'll be four of these in here playtime will be similar you know, some are director's comments it's usually the first one and what we want here is I'm just gonna rip it in English you know because this is an anime you probably some people would want it in Japanese with the subs um, I'm gonna keep the subs but I'm just gonna keep the English for simplicity's sake. Okay, English subtitles. DTS HD, Master English Audio, and your basic up here. Video effects settings. Not gonna mess with it because we're not changing any aspects. This is important, the M2TS pass-through. You wanna do the Blu-ray ripper to M2TS and pick the M2TS pass-through. What you're basically doing is creating one video file from all the pl the playlist on the Blu-ray on the actual disc has you know dozens of smaller video files. We're gonna make one big one and yeah, remix into file. We're basically that's all we're doing. I'm gonna go ahead and click start. There's no preview because it's not re-encoding it. It's just transferring the file. Notice this will be slow comparatively because it's coming from the disk. But later on, um, if you're doing just a hard drive to hard drive, it should be much, much faster. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video so you guys aren't watching this for the next 40 minutes. Okay, we're back. And uh, those of you with a keen eye can tell that I. Uh, switch the source over to a file backup of the disk I had because I didn't feel like waiting 40 minutes and as you, as you can see we went from 9 megabytes a second to about 40 <coughs> um, but again important part about this video is I'm showing you a method of doing this that does not require a video card because you will never have to transcode the video you just need a hard drive and probably like a dual core processor. It might take you a little bit longer than me, but uh, again, you don't need a 
yeah, very expensive computer to do this. Okay, moving on from DVD Fab. We are done with DVD Fab, so let's exit. Now we're going to go over to Me GUI. Well, actually, we're going to use TS Muxer. But uh, actually, TS Muxer comes with Me GUI, so all you need to get is DVD Fab and Me GUI. This is a tool within Me GUI. Um, okay, TS Muxer. Great tool. And again, what's awesome about this is we're going to pick out the audio without having to touch the video. Okay, this is the file it created. Ghost in the shell. Uh, 1080p, about 16 and a half gigs. Everything looks good. Just going to drag and drop. Okay. As you can see, there's the video track, H.264. We're not going to touch that unclick it and PGS is the subtitles we're gonna uncheck that so now we're just gonna take this DTS, DTS HD uh, audio track and down convert it to DTS click on DMUX and what's gonna do is gonna take that audio track out of the big file and make a small file out of it go ahead click start See, this is going to take about <coughs> four or five minutes. Again, I'm going to pause it so as not to waste your guys' time. All right, I'm back. Um, that really only took about two minutes on my computer, and it, oh, three minutes, 43 seconds, as you can see right here. Um, move this up so you can see. I've got uh, my layout here is this did not stress my computer at all. Again, graphics card is not turned on. Um, that's just the discs. And I have an i7, which is really overkill for what you need for this right now. Okay, we're done with TS, or not done with TS Moxer. Let's minimize it. Go back over to Me GUI, Modern Media Encoder. Open it up. And as you can see, this is the DTS track we made with TS Muxer. All right. Anytime. Oh, I didn't click on it. Let's see. Let's make sure there aren't two running. I don't know what happened there. Um okay, so we're in Me GUI. All we got to do is take this DTS track we just made, drop it into the audio input for me GUI, and uh, set it to FFmpeg AC3. Now, I believe you have to have, um, well I know you have to have some audio decoders or codecs installed in your computer. Um, I think, let's go to Config, I'll show you which one I'm going to use. I'm using Direct Show. I think it's using the uh, FFD Show source. Um, usually, you should have one of these on your computer um, if you're if you're new to audio video decoding. You might not have them. Um, just minimal effort online. Go look at some forums, and you'll be able to find either. I recommend FFD Show or the k Light audio codec pack. They're both very good packages and contain lots of stuff, most of which you'll never need, but uh, very good. Okay, so I'm choosing FFmpeg AC3, extension AC3. As you can see, I'm keeping the original channels because Ghost in the Shell has amazing mastered audio and it's the original was 6.1, so we should end up with a 6.1 AC3 file when we're done. Just going to queue it up and go over to queue. As you can see, I've been very busy. Uh, yes, I'll queue it again. So there we go. There's our job. We click start. Again, 
this doesn't take very long, but this is actually using a uh, multi-threaded computer, so if you do have like a dual core, this will take you longer than a minute, but it shouldn't take you more than 10 minutes to do this. As you can see, it's only 266 megabytes. And uh, again, I'll save you a minute. Stop the video for now. Here you go. Here's my FFD show thing showing up because it's that's the the codec it's using. But you can use you can use K-Lite, you can use FFD show. I'm sure there's some others you can use. Um, you might have to play around with it a little bit till you find what your computer likes and what you like. Okay, we're back. Um, as you can see, the job is done, and you see the AC3 file here going down from 456 megabytes to 266 so the end product should be a little bit smaller which is good you save some space if you're storing a lot of these midi these videos to stream which I am um, and now we're gonna go back over to TS Muxer where we were before and remember this is DTS HD let's remove this um, recheck these because the video and Presentation graphic is the subtitles. We'll just drag and drop the AC3 up here. And look, there it is. Let's expand this out. Yes, yeah, six channels, 48 kilohertz. I'm going to move this up. I like to always have my audio as the second track. I don't think you have to do that, but. Okay, again, remember we haven't touched the video at all, we haven't touched the uh, subtitles. So move this over from DMUX over to M2TS. Click. I'm going to change the title so it doesn't overwrite. Click start. Okay, see we're using four cores out of eight. Again, graphics card not doing anything not needed for this entire demonstration everything looks kosher now again you can get really um, detailed and do this from a command line from uh, like an ABS but again for the purposes of this video you can do this with you know, the two programs I showed you DVD Fab 8 and MeGUI which includes TS Muxer. And it really doesn't take that long except for you know getting your files off of the disk. It's the Blu-ray disk that um, is gonna waste most of your time. So like what I like to do is put is copy all the Blu-ray discs onto my storage because I have enough storage. And again you can do that with DVD Fab 8. It's really simple. And that way, if you want to, you know, say you want to make a DVD level, you want to take a Blu-ray to a DVD, you can down convert it and actually, you know, actually re-encode the video. Take it down to four gigabytes for a DVD or whatever you want. You can make a, you know, an iPod. If you have like a video iPod, make an iPod compatible version of it. And uh, again, I'm going to stop the video. Save you guys some time. Back in a minute. Look, yeah, we're done. Okay, we're done. In, I guess we're not encoding. We're just uh, you know, reorganizing the files. That took me about ten minutes. Um, it was only using four cores, so you know, if you're using like a dual core computer, it definitely will take longer, but it won't take like hours. It'll take twenty, thirty minutes. Um, click OK. Now we are done with TS Muxer and MeGUI. And here is our product. 14 gig down from 16. That's a nice 2 gigabyte savings. Click on it. Open it up in VLC player. Just to make sure it's not all, you know, something went wrong. There it is. Audio sounds very good, considering I just have a two-channel headphones. Codec information. 
yeah, so you're 852, you know, well, it's 5.148, and, uh, you know, it's a nice middle-of-the-road bit rate. Um, it sounds great to me. I don't, I'm not an audiophile. You can always increase the bit rate, but I don't bother. It's interesting video because you have there we go you have the old anime or drawn anime and then you have the uh, actual like CGI sections which are really cool yeah, I'm not gonna play too much because I don't want to get in trouble with YouTube so this is now playable on my Samsung TV you know, if uh, if you have like a external hard drive or a USB key that will fit this, you can plug it right in in the side of the TV, which is great. Um, or you can put it on a media server because the TV, anything, well, the TV accepts DLNA, which is a, another topic. I'm just gonna show you what I use really quickly um, it's running right now but you can't see it tversity media server very simple it's using the computer as a media server um, in a few months I want to set up a, uh, a separate computer as a free NAS box running this to my TV because I'm getting a lot of movies and I like to free up my processing power so I can actually do things while I watch movies, and if like a, you know, my antivirus starts running while I'm streaming a movie, it might start to stutter. But um, as far as processing power, uh, it does not actually take that much processing power to stream a even a 1080p Blu-ray uh, to your TV, as long as your TV is connected via the. Um, cord you know don't don't try to mess with um, wireless I mean you might be able to if you're if you're uh, educated on the subject but just plug a cord in the back of your TV plug it in your modem and then your TV will recognize your Tversity server or whatever else you set up and uh, you're pretty much good to go I think that con concludes our tutorial Sorry if it's a little long-winded, but uh, I enjoy this, so I like to talk more than usual. All right, thank you very much.